Scientists have made a groundbreaking discovery that completely turns our idea of human evolution on its head. We've always wondered who we really are and where we came from. However, the new sensational find only raises more questions. Could this be the troubling missing link that researchers have been searching for for so long? Stay tuned and join us in finding out. Sketchy History A quick search reveals Homo sapiens is about 300,000 years old. After our ancestors left the cradle of humanity in Africa, they famously conquered the other continents. However, the common knowledge is still overshadowed by some huge question marks. For in fact, to this day, we have no idea how exactly modern man actually entered the earthly stage. If we follow the theory of evolution, everything began with a decisive step, or more precisely, with the ability to walk on two legs. And even though many fossil finds have significantly expanded the history of our species, some fundamental questions, such as lifespan and distribution ranges, still remain unanswered. If we follow our current state of knowledge, our path began with the split of the last common ancestors of chimpanzees and humans. Basically, both the extinct and the still living descendants of these two subpopulations are called hominy. Within the species of hominy, researchers again distinguished as follows, Austriopolithecines as prehumans, Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis as prehumans, the species of the genus Homo, with the exception of ours, as early humans, and Homo sapiens as modern humans. At the time anatomically modern humans first saw the light of day, they were still living side by side with several other members of the genus Homo. While many species disappeared over the millennia, others intermingled or evolved, acquiring groundbreaking skills. These include, in particular, the use of stone tools. However, which genus and which species took this revolutionary step first remains controversial. As briefly mentioned, the historical traces we have been able to uncover so far about the origins of mankind lead to Africa, but not to a specific place or time. In fact, it appears that our ancestors evolved in relative isolation before climactic changes caused them to occasionally intermingle and exchange everything from tools to genes. Surprisingly, the study of genetic materials tells us more about the migration and evolutionary history of our species than fossil finds. The oldest known DNA of an early human ancestor was discovered in Spain, more specifically in the Sierra de Atapucura. Unofficially known as the Bone Pit, thousands of bone and tooth fragments from 28 individuals lay dormant in a cave. And the experts actually succeeded in extracting the 430,000-year-old genetic material from them and establishing that we are dealing here with the ancient remains of Neanderthals. A sensational mystery. In the early 1930s, a simple laborer in northeastern China recorded a discovery that seemed as bizarre as it was puzzling. While working on the Dongzhang Bridge over the Sangawa River under the stern eyes of the Japanese occupiers, he reportedly spied an ancient skull on the riverbank in an unnoticed moment. A closer look revealed that it was almost a completely preserved human skull which had a strikingly elongated shape. No less strange appeared the massive bulges that sat above the eye sockets, and the amazing size of the head also suggested that it was anything but ordinary. However, not wanting his unique discovery to fall into the hands of the Japanese foreign rulers, the finder hid the skull in an old well and kept it secret for over 80 years. Only when he was on his deathbed did he reveal to his grandchildren what an incredible find he had made back then. Then, in 2018, the so-called Harbin Skull was finally to be brought out of its hiding place. From then on, however, the scientists found themselves in an absolute quandary. So, they were not only richer by an ancient fossil, but also by a controversial question. How to deal with finds that simply do not fit into the evolutionary history of man? The Dragon Man a current investigation study comes to the conclusion that we have to do it here actually with a so far unknown humankind, Homo Eonji. Since the name addition Eonji, which actually refers to the place of discovery within the providence Heilongjiang, 
is however likewise the designation for the Chinese dragon. This kind should also be known as the Dragon Man. Since the vague oral tradition was not sufficient to narrow down the exact place of discovery, and thus also the geological layer, the age dating of the skull turned out to be an extremely difficult undertaking. With the help of the so-called uranium thorium method, however, the scientists succeeded in determining the minimum age, which amounts to 146 to 150,000 years. Since the skull with its unusual features looks like a mixture of prehistoric and modern man, the pressing conclusion is that it occupies a unique position in the hominid family tree. Chinese paleoanthropologist Xinjiang Ni, who led both the species and age determinations, openly admitted that he had never seen a find like this before. However, since Homo eonji bears certain similarities to other fossil finds in Asia from this period, the analysis suggests that all these fossils belong to a group that is very closely related to our species. What is more, we may even have more in common with Homo eonji than the Neanderthal man. At this point, we should not conceal, however, that the interpretation of the skull in the ranks of the remaining researchers does not meet by any means only with approval because in fact some experts consider it more probable that the Dragon Man is in truth in close connection with the mysterious Denisova Man. Of this population of the genus Homo, we know that it was closely related to Neanderthal Man and lived 76,000 years ago in southern Siberia and 160,000 years ago in Tibet. The problem? The secured fact situation over the Denisova human being is extremely scanty. Because actually only some teeth, a broken piece of skull, a finger bone, and a jaw fragment are available to us concerning this. Differences and Similarities In contrast, the analysis of the amazingly well-preserved Harbin skull appears to be somewhat more revealing. But how can the strange combination of primeval and modern features be explained? Basically, the skull is broad and stocky which, together with its pronounced over-eye bulges, makes it fit perfectly into an early modern context, a circumstance that is also confirmed by the preserved molar. This has three roots and thus a detail that is almost never found in modern humans. In stark contrast to this, however, are the relatively small, flat and deep cheekbones, which are generally associated with Homo sapiens. But how is it even possible for us nowadays to place a bone find that is thousands of years old into a superordinate family tree? Well, after Jiang Ji, who was in the employ of Hebe Geo University of China, got his hands on the skull, he initiated a large-scale data analysis. As part of that, the scientists fed a supercomputer with the characteristics of 95 fossil skulls, whereupon it spat out billions of phylogenetic trees. Such a scheme, in turn, shows the evolutionary relationships of different species. Although the newly discovered skull finds itself on its own branch within the phylogenetic tree, the path from there to our species is anything but far. A Question of Classification A realization, which came extremely surprisingly, is the apron the specialist had assumed, namely the Homo leonji, was clearly more closely related with the Neanderthal. However, this classification is also massively questioned by other experts. Some scientists insist that the features of the Harbin skull are indeed striking, but that this is due solely to their size and not to specific features. Or in other words, since such deviations are quite possible within one and the same species, it is wrong to give the Dragon Man an own branch on the evolutionary tree. But if we do not have to do here with an independent species, what then? In this regard, one critic, Laura Buck of Liverpool John Moores University, points to the Dali skull. This, just like the head of the Dragon Man, shows a mixture of primeval and modern characteristics. Tracked down in China's Shaanxi province, the Dali skull embodies a distinct human species, Homo dialinensis. And if skeptical scientists have their way, the Harbin skull should also be placed in that very category. Disappeared or Forgotten Away from the controversial species discussion, Laura Buck puts it in a nutshell. Even we anthropologists sometimes forget how strange it is that we are the only human species that still exists. But wait a minute, is that even true? 
Some remarkable reports about Homo fluorescensis make us suspect that in the isolated and secluded parts of the world, there are creatures that we usually don't even dare to dream about. Basically, Homo fluorescensis was damn small. Since the individuals studied so far do not even grow to a meter in height and weigh a maximum of 29 kilos, this species of the genus Homo is also referred to in unofficial circles as the Hobbit people. Discovered on the Indonesian island of Flores, a recent analysis revealed that the bones are at least 60,000 years old. In the initial description in 2004, the age was still put at 18,000 years. Either way, Homo florinicensis disappeared from the scene many millennia ago. Or did it? The stories of the native tribes actually indicate that this species survived into the 19th century. According to the breathtaking stories, the ancestors of the indigenous inhabitants knew a strange people they called Ubu Gogo. These were creatures as small as children and, with the exception of the face, were completely immobile. While the Ibu Gogo communicated among themselves with incomprehensible sounds, they also parroted what the people said to them. And who knows, if Homo fluorescensis really succeeded in surviving much longer than our scientific theories say, can anyone know at all what creatures cavort in those parts of the world that humans normally do not enter? Thanks for watching our video to the end. Would you like to receive regular updates on the most exciting discoveries of all time? Then feel free to press the subscribe button and leave us a free subscription. Finally, we want your opinion. What do you think about the mysterious history of human evolution? Can the Harbin Skull help us learn more about the evolution of our species?